Hi friends, I'm Prairie Vintage. My name's Linda. I'm an energy intuitive reader here on YouTube and I use spirits, my intuition, the tarot to communicate energies to you guys, most amazing, beautiful viewers. We will be doing a very important reading today and it's going to be long. I have a feeling <laughs> most of my readings are long, although I'm going to try to really stick to the point. Although I was intending on doing three and somehow it ended up being four piles. So I know this is going to be quite significant as most readings are, although there does seem to be something very special about this reading that we're doing. Um, it is being called for someone out here needing to hear this message. So what we're looking at is the person on your mind, person that you're connected with, and what is it exactly that they don't know about you or are needing to know about you? And why is it so important that this person know what this is? Okay, it might be something you think they already know, um, or it could be something that you know they don't know, but for whatever reason, they're needing to know this about you specifically, and why are they needing to know this will be pulled through the cards. Now, I haven't done a reading like this before, and we only have one pile of Oracle cards, although it is a massive pile, so hopefully we get to the what and the why it's important for them to know in the um in the oracle but i do have tarot so we can dive in deeper if we're needing to get more messages so grab your tea and grab your water and find a place to sit here and see whichever pile is resonating for you if you're pulled to multiple piles it could mean multiple aspects of yourself that is needing to be revealed to this person Okay, now if the energy sounds like the, the energy's flipped, okay, it could mean something you're not knowing about your person. And I don't know how you could tell, but maybe with your intuition, you would just know that this is something that is resonating for you, okay? But I do intend on it being something about you that this person either has no idea or it just needs to know, have more certainty, clarity about in order for there to be something. Um, which we'll see why it's important. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. We do have four options, like I said, and these are beautiful carved Mexican um, Aztec style tribal necklaces from the 60s or 70s. And I do believe it is agate um, or some type of onyx, but like I said, there's four options. So take a look at these, whichever one calls to you. We have the pink stone necklace. We have the blue stone necklace. We have the red or coral colored uh, necklace. And then we have the peach. So one, two, three, four. I will put the options in the time or in the time stamps in the description box and in the pinned comment below. It will take you directly to your pick and I will see you guys at your pick. Hello, my beautiful, gorgeous pile number one. You guys picked the pink carved stone necklace. Absolutely beautiful. Pink, beautiful color. We will get into your reading. Now we'll just put this right over here. And I do hope it doesn't get knocked over. In fact, I'm going to put this on the side here so that it doesn't fall over. All right, if you are interested in any of those necklaces, they will be available at prairievintagejewelry.com if they're not already. And I will put all the links down below. So what are we looking at? Very important message, and it's going to be a long one. I have my battery plugged in. I was intending on doing three, and now we're doing four piles. And you chose pile one. We're looking at the person on your mind person you're connected with and what exactly is it that they're needing to know about you that they don't already know or for whatever reason needs to be reinforced or cleared up for whatever reason and we'll see why it's so important that this person gets to know whatever this is about you as my email just goes off confirming what I'm saying so let's take a look at what this message is I am going to lay these cards out so I do ask you use your intuition what you will see feel or hear to determine whether this is your pile only you can use your intuition and do this so I will put a timestamp directly to the main reading okay that will take you once these cards are all laid out but um, sometimes channeling comes through as I lay these cards out so let's see what this is all about 
And as I always mention, if this reading is reversed, this could certainly be something you don't know about your person and that you're needing to know and why. And so your intuition would come into play here because obviously you wouldn't know what this is or maybe you need to know what this is. So we have the womb here with number 46. Yes, 46 or number 10 with the womb. I'll try to hammer through the layout if I can. The stairs with hierarchy, movement, and accessibility. The moon. Okay. Stairs. Hierarchy, movement, accessibility. Okay. And then we have the enchanter with deception and trickery. And we have femme fatale with light attributes highlights the erotic energy of the feminine opens your heart when your dependency is rejected shadow attributes inappropriate use of sensuality attachment to money and power okay highlights the erotic energy of feminine open it opens your heart when your dependency is rejected interesting So I'm just drinking tea. Okay, fairy ink cap with subtlety, 22. 22 is a master number. It is a peacemaker, diplomacy. It's about uh, healthy, energetic boundaries, divinely guided relationships. Okay, we have 14 or the number five with amethyst deceiver, deception. Deception coming through twice now. Interesting because we are talking about something this person doesn't see about you or doesn't know about you. So certainly could be this deception coming through, whether you're intentionally doing it or not was another thing. Let's see. We have solar flares. Oh my goodness. Solar flares. I'm getting heavy um, fire energy. So Aries, Leo, Sag. Specifically, I'm getting heavy Leo. I'm also picking up uh, some Scorpio energy. We have levitate, levitate with this oracle card. Okay. And we also have beacon of hope. This is giving me the lantern um, that the hermit carries. Hermit is Virgo energy coming through and then we have the peacock's tail with the number 55 another master number 55 changes the only constant divinely orchestrated change so we had divinely orchestrated relationships divinely guided and divinely orchestrated change the peacock's tail this always kind of gives me the wheel of fortune as well which is all about divine uh, intervention divine timing fate the peacock's tail okay we have sitting on top of the world with 68 we see the intuitive eye here so we could be getting some high priestess energy which is pisces sitting on top of the world okay i will put that like that because i don't know how much room we have we have clay i do feel i could shove these over just a tad so we can get all the cards in that we need to okay and we have wolf we have guilt and this is the orange ray chakra which is the sacral chakra Sacral chakra is about intimacy and is where we might have a lot of um, energy stored in our in our uh, chakras when it comes to emotions. All right, and lots of purple as well. Purple is um, giving me heavy intuition again. The high Priestess coming through with Pisces energy. We have Wheel of Fortune. Yes, we were getting that right here. So. Wheel of Fortune. There's three tarot cards that come in this in this poll that I did. And we have the world. Very interesting because we had the sitting on top of the world here as well. 
I am reading them all in the upright. Okay, we're just going to pick up energy. So whether there's blocks or whether there's reversals or whatever, this is what we'll pick up. So we have two majors, the Wheel of Fortune and the World. Interesting because they're both round. And we have circle here. Okay. And we have the High Priestess, which I was also picking up with the, all the purple. And what was it that was giving me High Priestess? The Eye. Okay, so Pisces coming through here. Very powerful with three major arcanas. Okay, and we have the moon and Saturn. Oh my goodness. Number 15 or the number 6. 15 is the devil in the tarot, which is Capricorn. Um, Saturn is the ruling planet for Capricorn, as well as Aquarius. And we have the moon in Saturn. Saturn is all about that determination and stick to itiveness and sometimes it's a very challenging sort of energy here we see the scales of justice so libra coming through as well okay now these signs that i'm mentioning it does not have to be your person's or your sort of sun sign it could just be in the birth chart with heavy prominence or the energy of this reading is coming through with these signs specifically so we have number three, realizing empathy as evolution or revolution, the R in brackets. Okay. And I'm not quite sure where to put it. I'll put it there for now. And we have slave and we have this storm scene in this Oracle card, which we'll put right here. Slave. Okay. So. I'm going to take a look to make sure I'm all in frame. Yes, but we can do this, which is better. Perfect. Let me sit with this energy and I will put, like I said, the timestamp will take you directly to the intuitive part where I'm channeling this and you can click on that to go direct. Just give me a minute. Okay, um, interesting energy because there's a lot of uh, little pieces I'm going to have to put together. So this might not come totally together right from the hop, but hopefully we have a painted picture of what this is as we sort of spread out this message. Um, I do certainly want to read this Moon and Saturn energy very briefly to see what um, this deck puts together here with this Moon and Saturn generally just a quick sort of message I think it would be here okay moon and Venus moon and Saturn right here so it says conjunct sextile and trine primitive depression prevents you from moving forward to fulfill your needs and wants adaptive emotional maturity leads you towards greater emotional regulation and life satisfaction Evolving, you exemplify emotional balance and skillfully integrate difficult emotions into your problem solving. Okay. Thank you, Spirit, for that. So, what's happening here? I feel an energy of yours that's divine feminine energy, okay? So, it doesn't mean you have to be born female, but I do feel a divine feminine energy here. And this is an energy that comes through as somebody here who is ascending, evolving, and integrating certain shadow aspects of self. And I think the one massive aspect of self here is how much this person and this connection is impacting you specifically in your 
in your world, in your life. So I feel as though you are going through an experience here and you're trying to kind of go it alone in some way without completely allowing this person, yeah, as my throat chakra closes, allowing this person to understand by expressing yourself in how this is impacting you specifically. I think you feel really almost like this person or this situation you have going with this person is really controlling a certain part of your life here. And it's very turbulent or has been very turbulent, but you're kind of trying to go it alone and you're trying to get through it and you're trying to really, really, really be adaptable here. And like a lot, okay, like maybe bending yourself so much to see different aspects of how you can be specifically for this connection, for this person, how you can learn to be adaptable and understanding and, and caring and workable. And But on the outside here, there's an energy of you doing this in a very subtle sort of way that this person does not see or understand how much this connection is really impacting you. And I think this has been ongoing for quite some time. And I feel like there's been certain behaviors or certain cycles in this connection that have been re repeated based on you having to learn certain experiences in the connection with this person about who you are and maybe certain aspects of yourself that you're not quite proud of so much, but you're trying to work with, like really, really work with here. And so there might be certain parts of yourself that you're not wanting to maybe be completely honest or see about self that you are prepared to reveal or communicate with your person. You also understand that there is a, a sort of a, a divinely reason why you and this person have been pulled together. Like there's a deep, deep intuitive knowing a sole purpose here as to why you and this person have been brought together. And so you feel like there is part of yourself that you're really having to uncover, work with, discover, but you're kind of doing this on your own. And so I do feel there's a lot of you growing as a person, you ascending as a person, despite fears, despite sometimes being tired, despite sometimes going into the darkness, not knowing, but I feel like there is a not communicating or allowing this person in to witness what this is here. It's almost like you are trying to overcome this, this stormy sort of experience that you feel very committed to almost like you can't escape even if you sort of tried here to be a guiding light here for this person. And so I don't know who this person maybe is, but, but I feel there is almost like a very deep, like uh, mother love here. Okay. I'm getting unconditional love, divine feminine love. It's like how we would love our child. We would never put our stresses on our child or we would never completely confide in the pain and the suffering that we're experiencing when we're going through something so as to not sort of terrify the child or to cause undue stress upon the child. And so we put on one sort of face, but behind that there seems to be a lot of pain. And so I feel like with this beacon of hope and these solar flares, like I feel like you're really, really, really trying to be in one sort of energy here that provides a lot of guidance and hope and 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 brightness. Like I'm feeling with this solar flares, like this is a very intense sort of energy here. But I feel like the intensity also is on the other side of what you are having to sort of go through because I feel like there is intense sort of emotions you're having to sort of navigate and there's also a need to get grounded 
And so as you kind of go through this, I don't think your person has any idea how intense or how involved this is and has been ongoing for you to find balance so that you can be in a very grounded sort of energy and show up for this person in a way that it no longer makes you feel overwhelmed and pulled out of your own sort of volition here to this situation or to this person or that this person has this much control in your situation or in this connection here so i don't know if you want to appear one way so you're not seemingly so vulnerable or if whether you're just not wanting to bring this person into this world um because it is a very intense sort of energy here I feel like there is a very positive energy coming through at the same time. So it's not all about the suffering and the stormy weather and the struggle, because I do feel like there's an upswing here of ascension, um, becoming a better person, a very excitable sort of energy, and sometimes feeling very euphoric with the levitate and sitting on top of the world. But then there's also heavy energy here of emotions kind of getting maybe trapped in some way here we have guilt so i'm not sure where the guilt sits with you so much but it might be you feeling as though you do not want to put anything on this person as far as your experience and what ha it has been so far with this person and this connection on them and so you're carrying the experience the good the bad and the ugly here but i feel like your energy here is one of trying to bend over be flexible and adapt and work with your energy as best you can so much so so that you can find balance here with this person and this connection and it's been just i feel very ongoing and I don't know if, like, I'm getting massive um, headache right now. I don't know if we are, you know, where we're at sort of in this, um, in this journey. But I feel like it's been cyclical for one for sure. Like we've been repeating certain things and having to learn certain lessons in order to understand a different experience about self so we're learning different aspects about self but i feel like for some of you guys maybe a lot has closed out you know and i i don't i don't know if it's getting easier and easier i do feel maybe for some of you guys it's <clears throat> hit and miss like maybe sometimes the connection feels as though you're you know where you're going and you know what's for the greater good and other times it's like walking in the darkness or whether you're sacrificing certain parts of yourself here in order to be appeasing or to open yourself up in a situation that might be very difficult <clears throat> now why is it important that this person know this i don't see so much of that again my throat chakra closing up the only thing I can see here, <clears throat> we'll pull some tarot, is because I think you feel alone. And I think there is some sort of um, message here coming through that you don't have to, like, like I feel like with subtlety here and the solar flares, like polar opposite energy, like, I feel like your experience could be one of a solar flare here, very intense, you know, and it could come on here like a solar flare, but then we're sort of trying to be sort of subtle about something here. And so we sort of dampen, we dampen certain parts of ourself. And with Beacon of Hope, I feel like maybe you lose hope that you'll be guided towards sort of what you're wanting. Although I do feel like you understand intuitively that there's something very divinely guided here and, and moving. So you've been following some sort of light and guidance. 
although I feel like sometimes we might be looking for the light in the darkness and I don't feel like you find it within this person because I feel like there hasn't been a communication in regards to how extreme or what the importance is for you with this person sort of being there with you or for you but I feel like again that parental sort of energy like you're wanting to protect you know maybe this person understanding how much this impacts you and trying to remain sort of grounded here so let's see if we can see some more because I don't know that this messaging is all, all clear or complete so spirits thank you so so much for this beautiful message for pile one in regards to the person on their mind the person they came here about and what they're needing to know about pile one specifically and why they're needing to know this can we please get some more information clear and concise message here for the greatest and highest good of pile one please protect me and the viewer as i channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile one and thank you so much, Pal One, for allowing me to tap into your energy, the energy around you at this time. I'm so blessed. Thank you so, so much for being here today. I'm going to read these all in the upright. We've got quite a bit here. Okay. I'll put these aside here. So the two that revealed themselves is the Empress, which is this womb energy, divine feminine we were feeling, okay, Taurus energy, Libra energy, and we have ten wands. This is the heaviness. This is the burden. Like we're carrying the ten wands on our back, having to carry the load ourselves. And, and the Empress here is pregnant, which is giving me womb. You see the child here, like she's birthing a creation. So you're trying to birth something, you're trying to create something, I feel alone, okay, you're trying to create it alone, it becomes this heaviness. Okay, how many cards do we have here? Okay, I do feel it this way. Okay, so let's take a look. We have the Ten Pentacles, so this is the family card. This is the long-term sort of commitment and stability with the Ten Spheres, Ten Pentacles. And we have the Hierophants, this is family as well. Okay, so higher commitment, higher learning, Hierophants all about commitment. Ten Pentacles is a long-term sort of structure. This is family, this could be marriage. Certainly mother energy coming through here. And then we have the heaviness with the ten wands and we have the six wands yeah like being victorious carrying the weight of the world you know and carrying the weight of the world so we can appear victorious and have success here with six wands and this is all about how we are appearing to others here and it, it seems like someone who's invincible in some way and uh, yeah i don't know Ace of Swords, the truth communicates, being honest and clear, and this sort of truth is pointing down. So we have deception, trickery, and then we have deception here, and the sort of truth pointing down. I feel like the trickery here is maybe you feeling as though you have to appear in a certain way to have success here, that you need to carry the weight of the world here in a family situation okay or just in this sort of commitment that you're giving to this connection so it does feel very strong like mother never complains mother just does it all mother you know is taking care of everyone else mother has to set the example and the guiding lights but she's also trying to create something and work on something here and so she's telling herself that she has to do it alone in order to have success or in order for this to be successful okay so let's see if we see some more <clears throat> six swords that's getting out of any sort of energy where we feel conflict okay you know we have three swords pointing one way and three swords pointing the other so i almost feel like a push and pull which again is mother energy we might be feeling really pulled one minute one way and pull the next with three swords is is pain okay that could be suffering and heartache and Maybe feeling heartache if we 
we go one way and sometimes it's feeling heartache if we pull away and go the other. So we feel torn at times. And so we might feel like, I don't know, like stuck or moving back and forth. Again, this is the cyclical thing I'm feeling. Okay, we got lots, like I said, in the card layout with the Wheel of Fortune. And this was giving me Wheel of Fortune. And the world about cycles here and having to conclude cycles. And so we might have been back and forth. Or not knowing how to navigate out of pain and, and pain in one way if we stay and pain if we try to pull ourselves out in some way. I still don't see why this is important for this person to know. We have the Ace of Pentacles. So this is about manifestation as another wheel here. So I do feel with the womb here and this Empress being pregnant and this manifestation of something looking like an egg like i feel like you're wanting to create something here manifest something okay yes spirit thank you so why this is important this person needs to be communicated to or you need to be clear about your having it having to carry a heavy load here rather than appear victorious or appear like you can carry it all on your own in order for you to manifest what you're trying to create here, because I feel like what you're trying to create is important to you. And it could be in a family situation where you're trying to create a long-term stability or some sort of commitment here. Okay. Or for the success of the family, for the success of the experience, your understanding, the values here, there needs to be open communication and a clear understanding so you can manifest this. Because I feel like this is the thing you're carrying or wanting to cradle and manifest but we might be not doing this okay we're not doing this we're not quite sure how we can maybe share our inner pain or communicate our struggle or allow anyone to help us carry this burden here or let them in for this so it delays any sort of um manifestation because we have energy that's a push and pull so we might make a little bit of movement only to be pulled back here rather than something kind of being created six of pentacles yeah this is the equal reciprocity this is finding the balance so sometimes we have to give to situations and sometimes we're we have to receive because we can't run dry and life is all about up and down which is this wheel of fortune we were seeing and so I feel like you're giving and giving and giving here like a mother would, right? Unconditionally, but I feel like it creates an imbalance. And we see the two hands here. So, yeah, and, and the hands like almost like saying like stop. I feel like maybe things are imbalanced because you give a lot, okay? Like you're giving a lot here. And so the universe is saying why this is important is for you to realize, for you to stop when you're over giving, when you're over, like over in, in the scales. Because this will cause things to sort of fall back rather than for things to be manifested in a way here. Because sometimes we need to pull back in order for energy to breathe, for there to be movement. Okay, for things to manifest, for things to get balanced. And if we're constantly pushing forward like this solar flare, it's a lot. Okay, solar flare could come very like, very much. It's an output of energy, the solar flare, and then it kind of torches everything because it's, it's a lot. So we're giving a lot at the expense of maybe gaining the, what we're supposed to manifest here. So we create the imbalance and the universe is telling us to stop to recognize when we're doing this, to realize here with this Saturn that we have to dedicate ourselves to recognizing when we're overly giving in order for us to manifest something that we're trying to incubate and birth that's important to us. We have the King of Cups. Great love. Lots of love here. This is um, Cancer Scorpio Pisces energy. So there's great love for you, okay? And oh, sorry, I forgot to mention with the Hierophant, that's Taurus energy as well. So Taurus was coming through quite strong here with the Empress as well. But the King of Cups falling on top of the Empress. Like I feel like there's a deep love here for the energy that you provide here, which is unconditional love, this beautiful, abundant Empress energy, Divine Feminine. 
And so I feel like whoever you're dealing with here has a lot of love for you. I feel like there is a lot of love coming from you, but I also feel as though maybe there is an inability to do what it takes here to, to find balance in a struggling sort of situation that might be kind of back and forth in some way because of an inability to know how to express and when so that it's not imbalance. So things can get clear. So we don't carry things too much. Like emotions are coming through very, very deep here. The hermit. Yeah, this is like um, sometimes even pulling our energy completely away here in order to kind of go inwards and really understand self. Okay, Virgo energy. And so King of Cups also is the king that loves the deepest, but sometimes doesn't really know how to take action in some way. So it's very passive. And a hermit is, is withdrawn. Okay, I see what's going on here. And five wands. And then the conflict. Conflict. So here's the conflict. Okay, I knew these readings were going to get long. I didn't know we were going to get this right at the end. So... The person you're dealing with has a lot of love for you. I feel this person is sort of removed. I don't feel this person is a solar flare type energy. I feel you're a solar flare type energy. I also feel like you're a giver, a, a mother type energy here of unconditional love. And this person here is somebody who is a little bit more removed, recluse, maybe kind of loves deeply, but doesn't really know how to express, doesn't really know how to show up here in in a way that allows you to see how this person's feeling okay so i feel like the more this person's in this energy the more imbalance this gets because i feel like you come out like this solar flare and you're giving and you're carrying this sort of heavy wands okay with the 10 wands here you're wanting to birth something here i feel you want to, to have a birth of balance have equal reciprocity and manifest either a commitment or a long-term stability or some sort of greater understanding between you and this person and I think neither of you guys are able to maybe communicate and so we're not seeing this about each other and it causes conflict and it could repeat cycles okay cycles in this connection where we might feel like this person isn't maybe loving or caring because we have to output we have to we don't have to anything but we are outputting all this energy of love and abundance and being this strong sort of beacon of hope Okay, and in order to have movement and progress. And so then we might feel like this will give us control in some way here with this hierarchy, you know, control of the connection or getting it back on track. But all it's doing is keeping it kind of in this back and forth energy that I'm feeling here and causing heartache for you with the three swords here and the three swords here, heartache for your person. Because I feel like your person is maybe just incapable or not educated in a way and i say educated not necessarily book smart but educated in experience to be one to understand how to output communicate deal with trapped sort of emotions in the sacral chakra which is traumas okay um in order to bring out this other balance and so we seek for this we look everywhere for this we try to find this balance from this other person and so we give more in some way so it causes pain for this person because i don't think this person wants you to burn out i don't think this person wants you to carry a heavy burden i think this person sees you as loving abundant energy that you know might be coming through here trying to give of self and this person might feel a lot of guilt because the scales are imbalanced and they're incapable of matching your sort of energy here so although you feel like you're this beacon of hope providing this sort of light because i feel like your intentions are very good i feel like it's it might be causing more guilt and, and a heaviness within this person and, and sort of pain here and and this dynamic being kind of maybe causing conflict, okay? Because this person might sort of carry guilt in different ways, you know? It might express or come out in different ways, or this person might not feel like they're up to your level in some way, or maybe this person might feel like they're incapable of, yeah, bringing or storing the other side of this scale. And so there could be arguments or just not uh, not agreeing with each other at some point in time because we both might feel like the other is abandoning in some way 
for we might feel like we're abandoning in some way if, if we're resonating as the person here, the King of Cups, who is kind of more of a closed off type energy. So we're not speaking the same language here, but I feel like the feelings are both there. It's just the way we show up, the way we express, the way we're capable of expressing, the way we understand to express ourselves is different. So we're speaking sort of two different languages and not understanding each other, but both wanting to sort of show up. But I feel like one person's sort of showing up here and the other person is feeling like they're not quite sure here how to be. So it's, I see what this slave in the storm and these five of wands it is the conflict here this is the conflict in this connection you know and i'm not saying you being this way is the only conflict but this is not helping and it doesn't help because i feel like the more you lean into something that causes imbalance the more imbalance there will be and the more maybe stormy weather here and repeating of cycles and so there is a need to pull back energy Okay, I need to pull back energy in order to give space for this person to come forward and, and communicate and express. And it might not be in the way of solar flares. Okay, but this is growth for this person. And this person also is going through dark periods where they're not quite sure what to expect as they ascend through their journey with you because this is divinely guided. Remember, we got that in the card layout. Okay, so this is what i have it's kind of came out in the end yeah realizing empathy as evolution revolution yeah revolution's giving me cycles again revolution so and realizing empathy so every time we do this dance every time we go through this with the saturn okay we might be losing hope and we might be then outputting more and more and burning out in a way here and we're needing to realize empathy of the other person this person might be not as expressive this person might not know how to communicate as well this person might have traumas this person might carry guilt the more we're trying to be in an energy here of i don't know some sort of perfect person in some way with this six of wands show up like uh, victorious here that we're superhuman in some way you know, as a parent would, but we can show our weaknesses by communicating truths and not deceiving and saying, I'm struggling here, or I have to carry this or just making space, you know, like making space, pulling our energy back in a way, knowing we have unconditional love, but not having to burn out here. Okay. So this is what I have. Beautiful pile. Number one, I hope this resonated for you and I will see you soon. Bye hello hello my most spectacular pile number two you picked the blue carved mexican necklace and i do believe this is um agate or a type of onyx i'm not quite sure but it's absolutely beautiful and it is available at prairievintagejewelry.com or will be if it's not already so pile two you put your necklace on the side so it doesn't fall we have lots and lots and lots of oracle cards coming through here so i figured it'd be a long reading so like i said grab your tea your water whatever you need here um because i do feel it'd be quite long although pile one wasn't as long as i thought but it took a while for us to get there because this is a new type reading for me okay i'm kind of mashing together two sort of things here one is the person on your mind person you came here about whatever connection this is and what is this person needing to know about you either they don't know they haven't understood this or for whatever reason they just don't know this part about you or about the connection with you and why is it important that this person knows this okay so we'll look at what they are not knowing or needing to know and why it's important that they know this okay so pre-shuffled oracle cards not looked at them we'll pull tarot as we need and if this again is something that maybe you're resonating as a flip reading meaning your person and maybe something you're needing to know then you can resonate with it that way and that would require more of your intuition okay so i'll do the card layout if you want to go straight away to the reading i will put the timestamp below although i don't make any promises that channeling doesn't come through as i lay these cards out so if you're wanting to tune in your intuition with mine then you can stick around for this card layout otherwise i will see you at the reading so we have thanatos and this is card number 73 so the number 10 thanatos oh okay spider web and we have helm 
navigation control and journey okay and we have patron mentorship and finances okay open book two hands and these kind of look like keys of sorts or staffs the patron mentorship and finances okay and we have messiah light attributes serving humanity with humility shadow attributes exaggerated belief that you are the only means through which a cause can succeed okay we have the card 19 or the number 10 coming through again and it is death cap with endings <clears throat> a 10 is all about endings i am going to put these here and see if we can get all these cards because there's quite a bit that are pulled through we have magnetic field the magnet and the lightning bolt okay and we have the warding bond warding bond okay looks like a shield and we have this oracle card looks like missiles okay i don't know if they're going up or down it's giving me eight of wands energy looks like these missiles are flying up arrows okay and we have ash 33 33 is a master number reproduction creativity humor it's about christ consciousness joy harmony ashes is sometimes where something's kind of done with it's it's an experience a thing it's had some sort of uh, tower moments i'm getting tower from this lightning bolt so sometimes it's very difficult to rebuild when we're in an ash state here okay let's keep going we have 43 someone soon number seven <clears throat> and then we have the hawk hawk is all about um seeing from a higher perspective all right the hawk okay completion so we have another sort of card of completion here with the number 10 endings and the 10 here completion orange chakra which is our sacral chakra about intimacy and where we store a lot of our emotions completion okay we have the cat beautiful green eyes could be significant white cat could be significant and we have three tarot cards that I shuffled out here. So we have eight swords, eight swords, all about uh, the limitations we put on self or that we believe to be true that are just mind limitations. I'm going to read out the tarot all in the upright here. We have seven pentacles. Okay, seven pentacles is the harvest, putting in their energy to reap the reward of something here and sometimes it's uh, being very dedicated but maybe feeling like giving up or not seeing the rewards just yet and we have the nine pentacles there's the rewards nine pentacles is the card of success standing on our own being independent successful capable and here we have 62 with neptune neptune or the number eight neptune neptune wow this is a pretty interesting energy and we have card 28 with opening to dreams and visions 10 coming through again like we said 10 is all about completion ends of cycles transformation it could be the wheel of fortune in the tarot okay which is all about divine guidance divine timing and it could be the sun reduced as well in the tarot which is having enlightenment success seeing things opening to dreams and visions seeing things okay and then we have o with the keyword and then we have this 
historical card of it looks like two older people sitting on a on a park bench oh okay i don't know if you're seeing this let me see if this is all in frame yes okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to read this neptune neptune because well this deck is fairly new to me and i like the keywords because it helps put things in perspective so very quick sort of keywords here with Neptune, Neptune. Um, before we get into your reading. So where is the Neptune going to be? Saturn here. Mm, no. Mercury. I don't think it's going to be in the front. No. Mars and Jupiter and Saturn and Neptune, Neptune. Okay. <clears throat> this card has only one aspect as Neptune has such a long cycle. You are lost at sea and cannot find a lift raft. A life raft, sorry. A life raft anywhere. Adaptive. You know how to meditate so deeply that all noise disappears. Evolving. You are a true magician and that everything you touch beams with light and love. Okay. Thank you for that, spirits. So, pile number uh, two. I do feel like reading this one as well. I'm sorry, coming at me. And then we can um, get into your reading. So, 73. 73. Oh, Escalop. 73. Okie dokie. Somewhere here. Okay, right here. So, death. Mm -hmm. We were getting lots of tens, and we have death cap with endings. It's tempting to oversimplify death and sum it up as a transformation, but the true archetypal resonance of Thanatos cannot be easily assimilated or contained. Death is ongoing and omnipresent. An eternal response to the gift of birth, witnessing the ending of another being, creature, phase, or stage has deep consequences for the psyche. We are forever changed by Thanatos as it sweeps us under its wings, making us relinquish control in every form. It leaves a mark of ash. It leaves a mark of ash upon our heart, signifying we have touched the cusp of the underworld and will return to the land of the living eventually with more compassion and wisdom to share. This capacity is needed in our world. One who has faced the an an annihilation of Thanatos can face anything. When this card appears, it signifies an invitation to the underworld, into the underworld. When in light, grieving, mourning, bearing witness to all that is, when dark, fear, or intensity to old age, illness, the dying. Interesting because we have the old age coming through here. Okay. Messiah. Sorry, these, these readings are layered, so they're, they're a little difficult for me to get right into it. But let's, let me sit with this energy. You can click on the uh, timestamp, and then we will um, get into your reading. Okay, pile number two, I'm going to say what I said for one because these readings are fairly new to me and they are very layered and I knew they would be and I, because we're mashing two things as to what this person doesn't know or needs to know about you because they, they aren't quite aware of it for whatever reason, either they don't believe it or haven't seen it or you haven't told them and then we're looking at 
why is this important that they know what this is, okay? So we didn't get the why so much till the end. But here in this reading, um, like I said, if this sounds more like what you're needing to know about the person around you, then you could take it as that. But this person here has gone through suffering, okay? And, and the suffering is a loss of something. So either it's been a divorce or a loss of a relationship or a massive sort of part in their life that is having massive, massive change where there are a lot of endings, but significantly an ending impacting a major part of their life. Okay, and so this person is not really been able to fully understand who they are without this, without kind of sorting through this experience. So if they had a divorce, then they're learning to stand on their own. If they're I don't know, going through whatever it is that they're going through here has been so, such a massive transformation in their life that I think has forever changed them. And so this person is having to work on who they are and understanding how to be. And so I think when this person is around you or in your presence, you might have a difficult time understanding who this person is or whether this person, like, yeah, like who they are and where their intentions might even be because I feel like this person might be a little temperamental and I feel like this person might be an energy here who you might feel you understand one moment and then the next you don't know it feels like this person might be wandering or trying to find place so you're not quite sure maybe how to support this person or understand what that's all about and so you might be identifying this person as somebody who is I don't know either inconsistent or just a wanderer of sorts or lost or I don't know like some sort of stray here with the cat you know maybe they're inconsistent with how they show affection or when they show up or they're not quite sure when they'll show up so they're kind of in and out or whatever this energy is of this person but I feel like this person is going through a massive sort of change in their life and so I feel like behind this all this person has a need to be someone very deep for themselves because I feel like this person wants to have purpose. I would feel this person wants to be successful. I feel like this person has a big vision of who they could be, what they could provide, and an idea of something that they want to be. Okay, and so I feel like in order to get there, this person has to go through a process and they have to navigate through this uncertainty. And so this person might be defensive and this person might feel as though everything kind of comes at once, including maybe this connection or how you connect, however, with this person. So this person might be blocking a lot out, including you, including everything. So it's not just about you. So maybe, yeah, like I'm reading this person as this, what this person, what you need to know about this person. So I don't know, crisscross it as it comes out. This is how it's coming out. So this person's blocking you. Okay, and I, I feel like the blocking here comes as a protective mode as they grieve and, and go through uh, the experience that they're kind of going through here, which seems to be a, a natural thing that's taking quite some time. But I do also feel like this person might sometimes have beliefs here that keeps them stuck, you know, and I feel like they're having to build their confidence. And for a lot of them, maybe they've like the world that they um, once had might have came down in a way that took away some of their stability, maybe their finances. And if it's not this, then this person might have been in a mindset here, not knowing how to be independent of whatever this is in order to find self. And so, yeah, this is interesting how this came out about this person rather than it about you. But I do feel like it's this person, um, potentially you're not understanding. And so this is why this is coming through. So I do feel like with this magnetic field, I feel like there is a strong sort of pull towards you in, in a way here that this person feels drawn to. But I also feel as though there's also an energy around this person that's a little bit unpredictable when you get too close. 
And Kat doesn't like to be sort of smothered here, and you never know what to expect in some way. So I feel like with this little lightning bolt I was getting tower, kind of when you're pulled into this person's energy, things might go a little chaotic. So this person understands this. So I feel like this person shields you from this sort of energy and protect you from their chaos that they understand or these tower moments that happen in their life that they're used to and maybe that they need to deal with. But I feel like this person wants to be better than this. I feel like this person wants to deliver better than this, especially when it comes to you. And so the best thing to do is to guard you out or to make a, a protective sort of shield, which might appear as though something that is removed or again, mm, yeah, in some sort of energy. Now there's something coming through here with like, um, the old age was coming through because I, I feel like this person is, could certainly be coming through as experience because we're having the journey here and the experience to understand self and to mature, to know how we're supposed to sort of be. Because with, oh, I feel like this person and Messiah, like I feel like this person wants to be of service of sorts or provide something here of value. I think this person wants to be standing in some energy here that they're not quite there yet. They're not sure how, and I think they're sometimes get in their own way and maybe they don't recognize that their limiting sort of beliefs are keeping them sort of maybe from having as much progress as they want. But I feel like this person wants to be this sort of energy, sees that they could be this sort of energy at some point, has a, a vision of this sort of greater person they could be but I feel like it's it's difficult for this person to sort of stay in that energy here. And so I feel like maybe you don't see that side because this person might have not have been an open book about it or revealing this. So it's been difficult to accept this person and this person has a hard time also accepting accepting what has kind of happened, accepting what they might be kind of needing to in order for them to move towards this um, more confident, sort of stable type person here. And we have finances coming through and lots of pentacles, which is all about our stability. So this person might be working on stability. They could be somebody who's gone from one phase of life in order to now be independent and stand on their own here in order to even maybe provide here um because i do feel like this person again wants to provide some sort of service here this person might have lost a loved one like i said or like been in a divorce or just separated from someone that they loved or had an experience here that has stayed with them and changed them in a, in a significant way now if they haven't in this lifetime, they've come in this lifetime with a, a lot of pain and blockages in regards to their experience of loss, which keeps them in a difficult sort of mind space because they come with a limiting thought of what they're capable of being or doing. And so I feel like this person sometimes might feel like no matter how much they give or show up that there's maybe something that they're incapable of providing or incapable of doing or being. And so they don't have that sort of confidence to stand in an energy here that is open and able to give and receive in a very flowing way. So it's it's this inconsistent sort of temperamental energy that might react certain ways when you get pulled near this person. It's like this person is rebuilding. So with the ash here and this spider web, like I, I feel like this person does value home and stability and creating a safe place, but it might not feel this way or it might feel like you might not see this person as this sort of an energy. Um, because I think this is going to take some time for this person to go through whatever mourning and experience that they have and i think this person also needs to have sort of control because of what has happened maybe it left them feeling like they didn't have control or they were out of control or they couldn't control their life in a way that was giving them what they wanted to feel like solid and secure and confident about self and so control is sort of important here but then when we 
sort of need control sometimes we have this eight swords because we start to limit ourselves in one understanding but i feel like there's been significant loss and a rebuild here in this person's life that now it might just trigger this impulse to need control so that they don't lose it all in some way or relive something here so they might be preventing certain things with their action now we have opening to dreams and visions i feel like this person is understanding something on a sort of more intuitive level here with the dreams and visions that they're needing to sort of embrace and with the hawk it is gaining a higher perspective a greater picture but i don't feel like this person is acting in that sort of energy yet and why they're not is because i think their mind is still a little bit limited based on the experience so I'm seeing intentions here, which are good, because I feel like this person wants to be the someone that they can see themselves being here. But I also feel like this person is having to work on how, what that looks like. Yeah, they're having to sit with what that looks like so they can gain a better understanding of how to, to do this. Okay, so this is their journey. Now, it's funny how it turned because... <clears throat> you could take this as your own energy if this is your energy but it, it sort of felt to me like this was maybe what you're needing to know about this person in your life and i did find that these messages were coming out because someone needed to hear it so maybe you have someone here who you're having a very difficult time reading their temperament in some way an ace of cups i am gonna read them all in the upright spirits Clear and concise message here for the greatest and highest good of pile number two. What are they needing to know right here, right now, in regards to this reading we're doing about this person, this energy that I'm reading? Why is it important that they know this right here, right now, Spirit? Thank you so much. This energy that I'm tapped into. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message, spirits. Clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of Pile 2. And thank you so much, Pile 2, for allowing me to tap into your energy and the energy around you at this time. Too many cards. I will put these back. Okay. So, I don't know. This could certainly be your energy that your person doesn't know. You know, that you've experienced this loss in some way. And why is it important? Well, I feel like the other person who's on the other side is seeing someone here who might be defensive, who might be outbursting, who might be temperamental, who might be shutting them out, who might be doing all these things. Meanwhile, this person wants to be of service. I feel this person wants to be like somebody here who's successful and confident in what they could provide materially, financially, um, abundantly here. Okay, Ace of Cups. This is an emotional new beginning. This is all about self-love, self-worth. Okay, lots of love here with this Ace of Cups. And then we have Eight Swords coming through again. Yeah, so the Eight Swords confirming what we were seeing here, which is that limiting belief we have, which we carry with us. And it could be a belief that someone else has told us or that we heard somehow and started to subconsciously believe was true about ourselves as a limitation okay and so when we carry these limitations it's something that restricts us from attaining what we might want because we believe we're capped in some way and it's impacting self-love it's impacting self-worth. It's impacting how we give love to self. And then we have the Four of Cups. And I'm not going to read them in reverse. So Four of Cups. Yeah, it's like the person's energy that I'm reading is working about self-love, how to receive, how to give to self so that they can show up in a way here that is capable of giving love. But I feel like this person might have I've been in an air like an energy of rejecting love you know and, and they could have rejected your love been very defensive four cups is the card that's not showing any interest sometimes it's unrequited love it's focused on the thing that doesn't matter so much what didn't work 
you know, the thing that we lost, the breakup, the loss, the things that aren't working in our life, rather than the cup that we're supposed to be focused on, you know, the cup that the universe is giving us, the cup of love, the cup of self-worth. And so this is the limiting thought. It's like, what if it doesn't work? Or what have I lost? And what if I lose it again? And it was a lot of pain, but lots of cups here. So I do feel there's a lot of emotions. And we were picking that up with the orange ray here, which was the sacral. So a lot of blocks with emotions get uh, trapped in the chakra. Okay, when we go through trauma, we have lots of blockages in the sacral chakra here. And we have the five of pentacles. Yeah, this person feels something about not being, I don't know, like providing some sort of pentacle. So either financially, standing on their own. So either they lost their whole structure, like financially, maybe, like I said, if they had a divorce, they lost all their finances or they lost their home or they're incapable of providing like some sort of structural home, financial material wealth. And, and maybe they feel they're incapable of providing this because there's a belief here that they're not yet able to or can. And I think this begins with loving self and knowing we, we deserve and knowing how to give love to self. But I feel this person feels five pentacles here. Okay. And, and five pentacles is a choice because we, we can choose to not believe these limitations. We can get out of five pentacles. We never have to sit in five pentacles, but I feel like this is causing maybe you to sit in five pentacles. You know, if somebody, if this person has rejected you, anyone who's rejected would feel left out in the cold and feeling rejected. So we have five pentacles and four cups. It's not a good feeling. Okay. This is feeling rejected and left out. And so if this person is doing this to self, I mean, and if you're around this person, you could certainly be experiencing this as well. And this is why it's important. So what's coming through now as a message is you could be eight swords as well, because we are seeing two. And I feel this person is certainly eight swords. Okay, and so the Eight Swords here is you limiting your own self-worth based on whether this person's capable of giving to you and showing to you maybe your own worth, giving to you love, having an emotional new beginning of love here with you. And so the limiting thought here is that because this person might be somebody who is not giving me this or showing me this or taking my cup, it makes me feel five pentacles. But what you're needing to know is that it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with this person overcoming a great sort of loss here, okay? And if it's not in this lifetime, like I said, we come in with traumas. It's having to overcome whatever this is because this has caused this person almost instinctually like a cat to get defensive, to put a guard up, to maybe spew things in a way here, caused chaos with the with the tower here when you get close or pull you in only to rattle things up in some way here okay i don't think it's intentional although i do feel like there is this energy of wanting better seeing better knowing better maturing in a way that's providing something better so as like i just heard like fine wine here that gets better with age i feel like this person is going to be in an energy that's able to pay some sort of service here to make something better here but right now i feel like you're probably stuck in some sort of limiting thought of who this person is and how it's impacting you and how you're maybe reflecting yourself or seeing yourself i guess i should say based on how this person is reflecting back to you but there's nothing to do with you so much here's the empress yes so abundance okay empress taurus energy this is divine feminine beautiful abundant unconditionally loving energy and so i feel like this is also about self-worth this could also be talking about mother um wounds we've had here because here we have the baby in the mother's stomach so we could have come into this world with this sort of a um trauma or we could have experienced it with the parental figure or have just issues yeah like being in receptive sort of energy i'm feeling here with this ace of cups keeps coming through like receptive energy to love to being able to give love and be loved and nurturing and this sort of an energy so there's there's challenge around this with this person 
And so I feel like it might be triggering you to be unconditionally loving, you to give yourself self-worth. Like the Empress knows how to lay boundaries, knows her self-worth, knows how to find unconditional love for herself and for others. Where it, it's difficult to find because maybe others are in sort of four cups energy. So I ask it, are you in an eight swords here with a limiting thoughts that you cannot be unconditionally loving to self? Or to this person, despite what sort of is coming out here, by laying boundaries, but also by being loving and giving love. Okay, and here we have the Four of Wands. This is coming together. This is the marriage card, union. Four of Wands for me is my 1111, which could be the Twin Flames soulmate connection. Okay, union coming together. And we have the steps ascending into the light. So I'm getting this energy again, the fine wine, as things kind of mature, as we ascend because of experience with the hawk here as we see from a greater perspective okay and sometimes seeing from a greater perspective isn't with the mind because we already know eight swords happens when we're in the mind having a greater perspective is coming from unconditional love in a heart space and then we see it from a different perspective and so we have a different understanding okay we get out of eight swords we say i can be unconditionally loving i can give myself and receive love and know that i am abundant and that i have high value and self-worth here despite this person's energy because i can see this from a heart space not from my mind and so i could be loving and giving to somebody here who might be experiencing something here that they're having a hard time getting through because they're also feeling four cups and five pentacles okay and so we bird something beautiful here like a coming together like a structure a family a solid foundation of trust where we can actually be confident and and build Okay, the, the four wands is a home, a structure is coming together. The nine pentacles is that material world of being able to solidly be there to build something. So I feel like this person's working on a nine pentacle self in order to come together here. And you might not know this or see this or experience this because of what you've experienced and what you see with your mind and your eyes tell you one story. And so we believe it to limit us, but maybe in our soul, in our heart, we have to see it from a different perspective, okay, in order for there to be a coming together. Now, this doesn't mean people treat you like crap and walk all over you, but I think intuitively you'd know, you know, is this person doing something here to hurt you or is this person guarded and defensive for some reason that we're not quite sure what the heck is going on here and it's a temperamental energy here, okay, but intuitively we know and we feel this unconditional love and we can have a greater perspective in handling this. We don't have to sit five pentacles and feel left out by this person, okay? We can give ourselves love when we learn about our own self-worth, when we learn how to do this. We're also going through a journey we're having to navigate here, okay? And we cannot control how another gives to us or when another shows up or how another, yeah, like puts down their sort of shield, but we can always control how we show up and how we can be loving okay despite what's going on to self and to others period no need to complicate anything okay so yeah i feel you know this too i feel like there's a very spiritual sort of intuitive knowing here in this connection so i'm sorry i read it this way that's how it came out so i hope it made sense you can flip it Okay, you can certainly flip it if you want, but this is what I have. If you're drawn to another pile, I will see you there. Okay, bye-bye. Hello, hello, my beautiful, gorgeous angels. You guys picked the cherry or the coral um, carved agate necklace. Absolutely beautiful. And this will be available at prairievintagejewelry.com if it's not already. So let's get into your reading, shall we? What are we looking at? So well, we're looking at the person on your mind, the person you came here about, and... What is it that they don't know about you, okay? Uh, whether they're wanting to see it or not, or you've told them or not, it's something they're needing to know that's unclear to them or that uh, they don't know about you because you haven't informed them or told them and why it's important that this person know this. Now, you could crisscross energy because sometimes it comes reversed and it's interesting because two kind of came reversed and I read it the other way. So I don't know usually how I'm going to read cards here, but my intention is about something about you that this person doesn't know so i will lay these cards out um and we kind of have both messages in here it's like 
what they don't know and why they need to know this because why it's so important for them to know this all mixed so i hope it comes through sometimes it comes through the big picture at the end we'll pull some tarot as well i've not looked at these oracle cards so use your intuition what you will see feel or hear to determine whether this is your pile and if this sounds more like maybe something you're not knowing about your person but intuitively you connect and resonate with it then the reading could certainly be flipped okay so let's take a look we have Agape, beautiful card, 72, or the number 9. And we have a file with mystery, strangeness, and transformation. Open intuitive eye and a closed intuitive eye. Okay, open, closed. And we have perfume, <clears throat> vanity, deception, and performativity performativity okay i don't know if performativity was a word but okay makes sense we have two sort of vessels here mm -hmm. okay we have the archer biding your time and planning ahead giving me sagittarius energy and we have seeker light attributes thirst for wisdom and truth wherever they are Shadow attributes, inability to commit to a path once found. Okay. And we have number one with Rishi, spirit medicine. Wow. Feeling heavy spiritual energy coming through here. Very heavy. Okay. And we have microgravity. Microgravity. We have invisibility with this animated oracle card, this hand sort of flipping around. Invisibility, okay. Let's put that like that so we can see. <clears throat> and then we have lightning bolt. Wow, look at that, lightning bolt. Lightning bolts always give me tower energy because it's about um, a sudden shocking sort of energy coming through here with the lightning bolt. Okay. And we have sugar, 31, or the number four. Sugar and spice and everything nice. Okay. I'm getting sugar and cinnamon. We have someone like sugar and cinnamon here with the browns, the cinnamon color and the sugar. Brown sugar, smother. 30. Okay, that's certainly coming through with this sugar energy. We see the snake here, and it's mothering this little mousy. Okay, 30 or 3. And then we have devil. Devil is Capricorn energy. Devil's unhealthy things, obsessions, and certainly with the smother it could be devil because it could be obsessions. And we have victim. With the acorn and the oak leaves, the squirrel and the dragon. Acorn and oak leaves um, is usually about the length of time because the acorn, once planted, takes a very long time to form into the oak tree. So something about long time here. Green is heart ray, which is our heart chakra. And then we have victim here. Okay. And right beside devil. Smother and sugar. This is interesting. Okay. Mandrake mandrake i'm getting very spiritual energy coming through this reading very strong we have the tarot cards now i shuffled three of them i will read them all in the upright we have the knight of wands more green energy that's heart chakra knight of wands with strength which is leo all about courage knowing when to hold back when to pull forward with the strength when to face your fears and then we have the Queen of Cups, beautiful energy. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces energy, the most loving queen in the tarot here. Compassionate, intuitive, creative. And we have Venus, Saturn with 32. Venus coming through here with um, this perfume. I do want to read this Venus, Saturn, which we'll read shortly. And then we have 17, choosing experiences wisely or the number eight. Okay, so I think what I'll do is put that there, put this here. I will check in a bit that you could see these. 
and we have share and then we have this sort of bar scene this person sitting on a bar stool or they're looking on a phone it looks like a bunch of liquor bottles there behind or some pharmacy I don't know if it's a bar or pharmacy but we have share one or the other keyword share um okay so I'm gonna read the Venus Saturn energy here because it is very quick in this book and this is a new deck for me gives me very good idea of the energy that's sitting here in this little section of your reading so it says conjunct sextile and trine Pr uh, primitive you make rigid rules that block spontaneous love from your life you are trustworthy and consistent in love and others admire your loyalty with the adaptive and then the evolving you have learned to create more love from the pain and loss of limitation having endured loss you stand as a true authority on love wow that was resonating with pile <clears throat> two very strongly that would have summed up that whole reading spoiler alert okay let me check that we are okay okay i think we're okay here you can click on the timeline it's going to take you to the um reading here because i'm going to sit with this energy so that i could tap into it so i'll be a little bit here I'm sorry, I gotta read this Mandrake as well. <clears throat> I'm gonna read the Mandrake. Maybe you already skipped ahead. I'm gonna pause it, give me a minute. Okay, <clears throat> so it says Mandrake. Mandora officiarium is another herb that has a long history with witchcraft and a great deal of lore linking it to fertility, sexual vigor, prosperity, and longevity. One common mandrake myth is that the herb emits deadly screams when pulled from the ground, killing anyone with an earshot. As mandrake is a difficult and temperamental plant to grow, this story may have been spread by magical practitioners to discourage other people from over-harvesting the herb to obtain its powers. The most curious thing about mandrake is that its thick taproot has the tendency, with a little imagination, to resemble a homunculus or a miniature human being. This familiarity has earned Mandrake a special place in witches' hearts and multitude of applications in sympathetic magic. Messages. Love is in the air and you should take the aroma for yourself. Sorry, take in the aroma for yourself. Allow your heart to be open to romance and it shall find its way to your doorstep. Someone is trying to spread stories or rumors about you to scare you off, to prevent you from achieving your goal. Get to the root of why. Is your goal valid or could it be potentially harmful? They may be jealous or perhaps they are genuinely concerned about your intention. Practice clarity in your communication and actions. There's no easy or fast road to big rewards and they're truly worthwhile. Eschew tantalizing shortcuts and lazy practices. I don't know if I read that right. Fully invest the time and care needed to perform a task properly and responsibly. Build any house as you yourself are going to live in it okay interesting this energy is very similar to what we were picking up with pile two so i'm going to read this as it comes out here because i i don't necessarily know that this is your energy or the person you're dealing with but the energy i'm dealing with here is somebody here who is having a very difficult time allowing themselves to receive love okay and i feel like this person could be in an energy here that um is hard to read because i do feel like this person might seem as though they are in one energy but it, it could be like with the sugar here and this smother energy which we were putting together here when we did the layout it's like an over-the-top sort of energy here that I'm feeling and so I feel like this person might be somebody who feels smothered by allowing themselves to enjoy or receiving love 
but it's an over the top sort of feeling because I feel like it's an anxious sort of feeling that comes through here. Um, that might turn this person into sort of, um, it turns them into someone that they're not necessarily. So this is hard to explain. It's like this person gets triggered when they feel like, I don't know, like if you're trying to give this person love, if you're trying to be compassionate with this person, I feel like this person might have a difficult time seeing this as, as something that they could accept and seeing this as something they could face. And what this person does is they sort of get triggered here. I feel like it triggers something within this person. So they might completely just ghost. They might completely just, like I said, there's like an intense overreaction over the top energy here. And so I, I feel like this person isn't understanding why they do this i feel like there's a part of this person that goes deep 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 down here that they're having to sit with that's a part of them understanding themselves at a spiritual level recognizing who they are like void of indoctrination and conditioning and matrix sort of experience with the spirit medicine so i feel like this person is being introduced to this sort of experience with you in order for them to recognize ego and in order for this person to transform because i feel like this person isn't in their full self like they they haven't recognized who they fully are and so this person is kind of asleep is what i feel here okay This person is asleep. So what this means is that they haven't been awakened. They haven't been spiritually awakened. They don't know who they are, void of what they've experienced here in this matrix world. I think this connection here is one in which this person is having to break through this energy that they're kind of sitting in. And this is going to come on their own sort of accord here. So this person might be... somebody who doesn't really seem to be showing up here in a way that is matching your level of energy is kind of what I feel okay so I do feel there's transformation I do feel that you're kind of in the dark and maybe you're not quite knowing because I feel like this person is either very secretive unpredictable uh, in one energy in one minute one on energy in another minute and so I think you might be trying to get like a concise answer here like what does this person want or what is what is going on here with this person as my email confirms you know wanting certainty clarity wanting this person to be concise wanting to know and this person seems to be i don't know if they're wasting time or they seem to be trying to throw you off one minute and you're not quite sure or it seems like maybe they seem like they're committed in one moment and then it's not enough or you don't know what they need and so out of the blue they just act spontaneous and they might go ghost i feel like this person goes ghost okay um but there's some core here within this person that is needing to come out in order for them to see who they are in order for them to start to make different decisions in order for them to break out of this energy now so I feel like this is an unhealthy way of being. I also feel like this person could be addicted to substances. Some drinking, some could just be, I don't know, could be drugs, could be distractions, and it could be sitting, wasting time with things that don't really necessarily matter so much here. Or they could be very shut out and alone, overcoming some sort of addiction, suffering sort of in this world not knowing how to give of self or share of self in one way and when they do i feel like it's over the top so this person might love bomb you might come in might show shower you might want showering from you I, I don't know i feel like there's this very heavy energy as this person heals it's um 
we're not quite sure because the transformation here is unpredictable. So when they're smothering you, I feel like it, it could feel like you feel, is this, you know, is this person finally is seeing something here? Are they allowing themselves to open up? Because maybe sometimes this person is very held back. And then when you think you understand, then this person has a difficult time committing. And so then they might go ghost or suddenly do something here, which is all stemming from ego. So I feel like you're a victim. And I feel like this person is sort of sitting in a victim mode because they're not seeing their ego and working with this in order for them to show up in a different energy here that's more true to their spiritual self. And so I do feel like this person might be somebody who would rather have like immediate gratifications in order to keep themselves in some world that they experience this. And so they're making these choices, but they're needing to make wiser choices in order for them to learn about love and spirit and connect and receive unconditional love from others and of self and find the courage to face some of their fears that it might be surfacing but they just shut out in some way there's something greater here that this person is needing to see and come in contact with the ego's in the way i feel like now i didn't mention they were asleep but i feel this person's waking up okay like this is what's happening in this process in this journey i feel like they're going from someone that they're being i mean they're being in this in this sort of matrix world but it's not who they are and they're going from this being in order to transform into who they actually are here okay which i feel is different than this and that new energy that they could be is someone who could receive love and could be open to giving love and, and connect and make different decisions but this energy that I'm looking at is somebody who isn't making very good decisions here and could be battling addictions. Therefore, they're sort of um, making these decisions, okay? And it's um, not coming from a place that's very clear or cleared up from the fog and stuff. So when they are spontaneous, sporadic in their reacting or when they go ghost or invisible or you don't hear from this person... And then they, they come in here, I feel like love bombing or, or showering maybe with something. Or I feel also they give in to these sort of impulses. I feel like this person is going through this and, and might even turn things around here on you. So they, they, they play this victim sort of role here. And if they could get away with making you feel like you're sort of like you're involved in this some way, okay? I don't know how this is coming through, but it's almost like this person might make you feel like you've done something wrong or that you can do something different and that you're sort of to blame here and in, in why they are acting how they're acting or that you brought out something in this person or that there's something like this here, okay? Or if you point it out, it's like they turn it around and, and make you sort of be the bad guy here in some way. Yeah, I don't know that I like this energy so much, you guys. I've got to be honest with you. But I feel like this person is is in search of who they are, is in search of real truth, is in search of this. Whether they know it or not, it's going to find them, but this is the journey they're on. Because I feel like there's a spiritual growth that has to happen here in order for, for there to be medicine for this person to come closer to who they are and give this healing. Because they're in this victim sort of mode. Mm hmm. I don't know how the vessel's coming out here, but I was feeling a vessel. Sometimes the vessel could be we're um, protecting ourselves in some way by what we do or shutting things out. So we're in our own little bubble. So our bubble world can be staying distracted and, and needing the courage again here to face some of the fears here and, and facing and battling what these devil energies are that is holding us back from love, from giving love. 
So let's see. I, I do feel this. I don't know if this is your energy or not. We still don't see. I mean, why is it important for the other person to know this is because I feel like this person is acting from a place of ego, you know, and when they love bomb, we might not know, you know, is this person being genuine and honest with their feelings? And then if they are, why are they then pulled away and sort of invisible when I need them? Or suddenly just overreacting in some way. And I think the need to know is because this person is going through some sort of spiritual awakening of finding self. But this person doesn't quite have self yet figured out. And so if they can't figure out self, there's no way you're going to be able to figure out who this person is. And so this is why you need to know this. Because I feel like with this Queen of Cups, this is your energy. And again, like Pile 2, this came reversed you're giving okay now you could flip roles if you're the person here who's suffering in this way but i feel like someone's here is giving and giving and giving compassionate loving caring and facing their fears their courage to show up here despite again this like to me this is stormy weather with all this rain and the stormy weather here is this person is inconsistent and maybe not treating this person great because we have this victim here and this is taking a very long time with the acorn and the oak leaves very very long time and so this person standing here being sort of maybe abandoned i feel there's a lack of balance and i feel like this other person here is going through some massive sort of need for spiritual transformation that they're walking this path so spirit what does pile three need to know about to this message clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of pile three Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile three. What are they needing to know about this energy that they don't quite yet know? And why is it important that they know? And if it's flipped, then the energy that I'm tapped into here. What's going on with this energy that I'm tapped into? More information, please, Spirit. Clear and concise. Thank you. Okay, Four of Wands. I'm reading them all in the upright today. Okay, Four of Wands. That's my 1111. That's Twin Flame. This feels very Twin Flame-ish because there is definitely somebody here who is in massive ego. Matrix Twin, suffering, okay? And sometimes it's very challenging. Now, you don't have to agree so much with the label, but it's challenging because one person is in one sort of experience and then the other person's learning about unconditional love and self and how to lay boundaries, and not to be sort of maybe taken advantage of in some way, okay? So Four of Wands is coming together, is union, is marriage, is celebration, is structure, foundation, community. So we have the Queen of Cups coming out again twice. So the Queen of Cups is Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces energy. Intuitive, creative, compassionate, unconditionally loving. Okay, giving of self. Sometimes the Queen of Cups doesn't know how to not give emotions here. So I feel like your energy, okay, and flip it if it's not you, but your energy coming through as Queen of Cups is somebody who is wanting to give to a situation. I feel like you you have emotional depth here for this person. You want to have structure. You want to come together. You want to have union. You might want to have commitment or build a family. Okay, come together in some way here. So I feel like you're giving to this person, but I feel like this person is having to go through something here that you might not, yeah, the hermit, that you might not be privy to just quite yet of where and why. But I feel like the ego work that they're needing to do here is the internal work of going inwards, okay, with this hermit, Virgo energy, in order to discover self. And the hermit's journey is one in which we do alone. Because in order to explore self, we need to walk this alone okay so i feel like if you feel ousted in some way or you feel like he, this person isn't sort of showing up other than the maybe love bombing here okay is because this person is still having to figure things out here so there might be a need for you to be hermits held back here with the strength no one to hold back no one to put boundaries no one to pull your energy away Okay, now this doesn't mean you don't have to be unconditionally loving to this person because I feel there's deep, deep, deep love here coming from you. But this does mean that you're going to have to be in an energy here that knows of self, of when to be held back because we don't want to be smothering someone, okay? But we also don't want somebody to grab onto us in an unhealthy way, confusing this with unconditional love when this is more of a matrix type love, okay? 
Okay, so let's keep going. Two wands. This is a choice. Having to make a decision, having to choose the path that might be a little more difficult that we're being called to walk down. And sometimes we choose the path that's easier because we can have addictions and we can be stuck with our comfort zone and it's familiar. Okay, sometimes readings come through very pointed in my readings. So if you read my disclaimer, it just, addictions don't necessarily have to mean drinking your drugs in some way okay but i feel like there's distractions here whatever this thing is here the devil energy holding this person back the comfort zone whatever they're used to distracting themselves or numbing the pain or keeping things out and not allowing themselves to share or be a part of the receptive energy that's the unconditional love here in order to ascend to become spiritual here this person has to choose this wand choose this path queen of wands so Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, this is the queen that manifests. This is the attractive queen, the queen that knows her self-worth. I feel this is your energy coming through. So this person sees you as someone who is loving and very attractive. Okay. But I feel like there's a need for you to give to self, for you to manifest for self, your own self-worth here, because I feel like you're not being appreciated in this connection right at this moment. Because this person is needing to choose this in order to show up, in order to give love, in order to see your value. Because this is, I'm getting very high value, beautiful energy coming from the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Wands. Okay, and so we're needing to learn about our self-value and our self-worth. So we have strength coming out again. Look at that, you guys. Spirit is always on the ball here. So strength, strength, coming out twice. Queen of Cups, Queen of Cups. Okay, and I just pulled two tarot packs here and the fact that we're seeing them twice is very strong confirmation okay because strength here is about facing our fear and strength is when we have to know when to be sort of held back and guarded in a way that we're not just guns a blazing but also know when we can move forward here with grace and facing fears and this can also be a very strong sort of sexual energy here coming through, especially with the Queen of Wands, the Devil, and the Strength. So this person might be very sexually pulled to you, okay? We're getting some of that with this Mandrake. Yeah, and this Sugar and this Smother. So lots of sexual tension and energy here. And so I, I feel like there's a need, okay? And this could be mirrored with you and your person. So there's a need for you to lean into this sort of uh, strength energy and even this Queen of Wands who is a little bit more able to be restrained and pull towards her what she needs here. Okay, um, and, and I feel like this person is needing to face fears of dealing with their problems and their situations rather than distracting in order for them to share of themselves. But I feel like there's something that comes together here with this sugar and this smother that I feel like is, is both you and this person is kind of what I'm picking up here, you know, like something very strong that's pulling you guys maybe sexually together, or like to come together in a way, but it's not getting to the root of what needs to happen here. So we're dealing with surface things here and this keeps this connection stuck this keeps this person sort of not pushing them to better themselves or make the choice of the, the wand here that's needing to be made because they're not needing to. So your involvement here is, is quite significant as well. Yes. Okay. This is now coming clear to me. Yeah. Six wands. This is, um, this is my ego card. Okay. Um, it's about success, victory, doing the lap of victory here and having the accolades and being celebrated. It's the network of people um, celebrating us and our victories. It's, it's how we appear to others, being victorious. So look at this card kind of celebrating and being this sort of macho type energy. So, okay. I feel like there's mirroring and this is why this, this pile specifically came out the way it did. You can be certainly in an energy that you might not recognize is sort of still asleep in a way here in ego. Okay, and I'm not passing judgment. I'm just reading the cards as I see here. And this part of the ego self is connected to something physical with this person. 
that you're pulled to, that you might be confusing as unconditional love and giving, but it's, it's not coming from a heart space of true unconditional love, which is the unconditional love of self to lay boundaries, to be loving to this person, but not give in to any sort of immediate gratifications here in order to have small victories or in order to feel better with the ego. There's a need to shed the ego. And we require a lot of courage to say no, to lay boundaries, to be held back when we feel like we want to give in to these sort of passionate pulls. And so we might be using this person as a distraction addiction of sorts too. And so when we love from an unconditional place, another person, it starts with self. And so I feel like if we've been more outwardly focused on this person and there hasn't been a lot of inward sort of work done here, we could constantly be outputting energy, emotions, and giving to a situation here, either physically, sexually, energetically, lovingly, thinking it's the best thing because it's positive energy, right? But it's causing damage. And why is because this person is having to go through an awakening of self. And as they do this, you also awaken self. You shed ego. You learn about yourself in a way here that allows you to lay boundaries and not pour of yourself in a way here that causes whatever sort of dynamic is going on here. Because I feel like this is a dynamic that's very volatile, which I was picking up. Very extreme. This person, like I said, will either disappear or go ghost. And then there's sudden outbursts and there's heavy passion. And then there's two victims. I feel a lot of mirroring, a lot of devil. As this comes through the end. So the message here is talking about how can we have the victory? Is when we understand unconditional love. When we can give this to self, understand our value not need to engage with somebody's behaviors, not feel overwhelmed by someone else's energy where we feel completely smothered and we need this in order to feel good about ourselves. Because when this person pulls out or blocks or goes ghost, we come crashing down like this sugar high and then we feel very victim. We feel abandoned. Okay, but... This is how we transform through this, but we need to be awake to this. We can't keep repeating or being stuck in this. So this spiritual lesson, spirit medicine, this connection, this twin flame coming together or whatever, soul partnership coming together is doing so. It's being divinely guided in a way that's bringing medicine in a spiritual way for you to learn about self-love, for you to learn about giving of self, for you to learn about how not to give into obsessions and, and sexual maybe energies here, or even if it is not so sexual, it is this impulsive energy here. Okay. And same with this person. So there's a lot of work. And this to me is, is the having the, the ego death, going through a spiritual awakening, doing the shadow work with the hermit here and really having to not be so concerned with how we appear to this person or for others or in a connection because we are no longer concerned with winning or how things appear. We're more concerned with truth and, and unconditional love and what we can give of self in an honest way here in order for there to be union and a coming together in this connection, okay? In order for there to be structure, in order for you guys to ascend, to be the best version of self. And so this choice has to be made still and I feel like it's for both of you guys. In order for you to choose this path, for you to ascend, for you to come together here with this person, regardless of what they're doing right now, you have to choose that path. You have to guide yourself. And I feel like if you're divine feminine, which I feel you are, she leads in this, in this spiritual journey. But she must lead by example by choosing this. It takes a lot of courage and strength. Yeah, I'm seeing naked here too. So I, I feel like there is a lot of pull here to this person that you feel and we have to work through this because we can't resist but we have to understand self to the point where we can lay boundaries 
and we don't give in to this because I feel like uh, it comes to a point where we get uh, crashing down here, okay? Yeah, we come crashing down. And so there's a, a more important relationship, partnership beyond this that you might not see yet or that isn't revealed yet. It's the core of this connection. And I feel it is very spiritual. And I feel it, it goes beyond this surface stuff that we're seeing here. You're not quite there yet and neither is this person. But know this, that when we choose that, we start to reveal this more core relationship, this more important spiritual matter of this union of coming together with this person. It doesn't just happen overnight. It is a step-by-step -step process as we become a better version of ourselves, as we start to see things from different perspective, as we ascend, as we learn about unconditional love of self and of other, we slowly start to walk down that path and make that decision. And then more of this core of this true connection starts coming out. Not this intense sort of energy I was feeling here that's overwhelming. So one's going to lead while well, one might be more asleep. But the goal is both will awaken. Biding your time, planning ahead with this arrow. So yeah, I feel like there is a purpose, okay, for coming together for sure. And I feel like there's a need to get very clear and concise about where we want to go and sticking to what it is that we want to see for self. And this is going to take some time and some planning, some commitment. And all you could do is focus on what you can do in this connection, Okay. But it's it starts with self, what you can understand about yourself, why you might be doing what you do, why you might be distracting, what, what are you oversharing or undersharing, what do you need to share, what are you using here to cope, is it healthy, is it an ego, is it being honest, are you sort of not allowing yourself to be your true self out in the open without the conditioning and, and all the other things that maybe you've told yourself you have to be or are. How do we react when this person comes in and out or when this person ghosts or when this person does something? Do we, is this lightning bolt us? Do we react? Are we projecting? Do we start getting angry? Do we start to get violent? Do we start to say things because we're mad, we're angry, we're upset? Rather than seeing this person's actions have nothing to do with you at all. Okay, so this one turned Pile two was very similar, but this seemed like a more earlier version, sort of, than pile two, because I feel like both parties here are heavy, heavy mirroring, heavy, heavy, unhealthy ways of being, okay? So, I love you very, very much. This isn't everyone's reading. I get that, and sorry, maybe you went all the way to the end to hear this, but that's what how it came out. So, I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye-bye. Hello, my gorgeous angels. You guys pick the peach. Uh, I do believe this is a type of agate um, carved necklace. Okay, Mexican necklace. Absolutely beautiful. Looks like a sundial. And this will be available at prairievintagejewelry.com if it isn't already, if you're interested in any of the necklaces. So pile four. Sorry if I called you three. Did I call you three? I don't know. Pile four. Wasn't going to do four, but then when I picked the necklaces, there was absolutely a message of doing four. Okay, so four piles. You guys are the fourth. What are we looking at? Well, the person on your mind. And what does this person need to know about you specifically? So this could be something you've told them, but they just don't understand. Or maybe you haven't told them, so they don't see or understand this part of you. And why it's important for this person to know this specifically about you. Okay, so... I don't know what we're going to see here. And for two and, and three, it kind of came out reverse in some way. It, it always comes out funny in, in my readings here. So I intend on this being, you know, you and you seeing something about self that this person doesn't quite understand or see. And then also why it's important and mixed in kind of one pile here. So it is a little bit of a tricky reading that might not come fully clear until the end. So I will put the timestamp so we can get straight away to the reading. Although I do ask you to use your intuition, what you will see, feel, or hear throughout the layout to tune into your intuition so that you know whether this is your pile or not, because only you can do this. 
All right, and sometimes channeling comes through the card layout. That will help you determine whether this is your pile or not. And if the energy is reversed, if I say it's you and it's them and vice versa, then just crisscross it, but don't force anything to fit. Okay, so we have lots of cards. I don't know that this is all going to fit, but let's see what we see. So we have inspiration. Wow. With the cauldron here and all this beautiful golden light. Inspiration. We have dissipating. More yellow. Yellow is the solar plexus energy. Dissipating. Okay. And we have blade. Conflict, injury, and apprehension. Apprehension I was getting with this dissipating. Almost like we're... we're yeah, we're, we're taking our time with some decision we have to make in some way here. We're apprehensive. Okay, the alchemist, balance, invention, and destruction. Balance, invention, destruction, the alchemist. Okay, air energy I'm getting with this, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. See the acorn, feather plume, some crystals. Okay, I'm going to put this like this so we have room because these cards are quite big. Let's see what we have. So we have queen. Light attributes. Radiates the regal feminine. Uses her benevolent authority to protect others. Shadow attributes. Becomes arrogant when authority is challenged, controlling, and demanding. Okay. We have the shaggy ink cap with growth and destruction cycle 21. So we had destruction here as well. It's so interesting how these cards come out because the piles are very synchronistic. And so we see this shaggy ink cap. And this is an ink pot. These are two different oracle packs, okay? An ink pot here with the feather plume. And then we have destruction and destructive destruction cycle with ink. Okay, ink could be something tainted. It certainly could be a writer here, a creator of sorts. Maybe painter, writer, lyrical person. Also coming through, okay. We have star, Aquarius energy. This is all about our hopes and our vision for the future there because someone could be stardom okay i'm going to start them here with the maybe they're uh, an artist a star artist yeah and the tv here a performer i'm getting a performer energy coming through here okay let's keep going so we have this protection from poison in this animated oracle card as my email goes off skull and crossbones protection from poison and we have this beautiful sun energy, solar rays. So the sun is Leo energy, divine masculine energy coming through. I'm feeling Scorpio energy from here. And we have create food and water. Create food and water in the barrel and the basket. Food is all about abundance here with the bread, the carrots. And then we have the barrel with all that water, water's emotions. Create food and water, okay? Creating abundance. We have against nature here with a 56 or the number 11. 11 is a master number, divine inspiration, synchronicity, and then encouragement to keep going against nature. Could be us resisting something here, um, like we were feeling uh, apprehension. But we have this big old shadow here going against something. Maybe we're resisting something. Okay, calm with transformation. And the two snakes, which is about healing, transformation, wisdom. And then we have the eight. Sorry, no, we have seven wands here. Seven wands. Okay. And we have 76 with death of the deceitful. More skulls. Scorpio energy, that's transformation, death, death of the deceitful. So deceitful, destruction, okay, and inspiration here. Okay, and then we have the boar. This is a very fixed energy, stubborn energy. And we see the flame back here, boar, stubborn. Okay, so with the tarot cards, I pulled three, and we're going to use a different pack to get clar clarifiers, but I will read these in the upright. So we have the eight wands. Okay, eight wands is all about communication, forward movement. 
And we have the devil coming out, Capricorn energy. And this could be toxic ways of being, okay, obsessions, addictions, being held back. And we were sensing held back energy here. So it could be talking about this apprehension, devil energy. Okay, and then we have nine cups. Nine cups, getting one's wish, emotional fulfillment, emotionally satisfied and happy. Although nine cups could be a selfish energy, over gratifying self, thinking of self. And that could be strong with this devil energy. And then we have Venus, Jupiter with 31. Well, Juno, Jupiter's abundant and, and Venus could be beauty and love. Um, although we could get ego here. We can get big sort of big energies coming through 31. Okay, I'm getting very big energy. Breaking the chain of repeating cycles, 32. Breaking the chain of repeating cycles. Okay. And we have game and we have this lady in a really short mini dress smoking a cigarette outside a door that looks like it's, it might say hotel in some way. She might be a prostitute. I don't know. Just looking kind of suspect with game. Okay, spirits. Thank you for that one. And we have this crone. 13. 13 is the death card in the tarot, which we were seeing a lot of the skulls, which was the death. Crows are all about the death. Transformation. Crows fly between worlds with communication. Communication is eight wands. Crone is experience. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm just making sure we're all in frame. So you guys can go ahead and, and click on the timestamp. They'll take you directly to the reading. Because I'm going to sit with this energy here so I can get very clear about what this is about. And then we can get into your reading. All right. So give me a minute and I will see you there. Okay. Pile number four. Um, so there's, there's lots I wanted to say. First, I wanted to say that uh, these readings are a little bit difficult because I don't never know how they're going to come out. So try to kind of put it into your context, okay? Because there's lots of people here. And sometimes it becomes very clear by the end. So we might get into things sort of becoming very clear as they might appear one way. And then we sort of solidify it when I pull the tarot. Okay, but I feel like yours, because we have what it is that this person is needing to understand and why it's important. But I feel as though this is sort of a message for you to understand about this person. Okay, and you can crisscross it. If I say you, it's them. But what I'm getting here is there is a challenging connection between you and this person. Okay, for whatever reasons, the challenges remain, but I feel like it's a very big, big sort of challenge that seems like it's a big gaping challenge. Okay, and so it doesn't matter how beautiful you might see things here and how maybe you're wanting things to be or what you're sort of trying to cultivate. There is this gaping sort of thing that can't be ignored in regards to this connection with this person. Now, for a lot of you guys, I am getting, just so you can confirm if this is your person or not, or it could be you, I'm getting a star here, like somebody who is well known or they have some skill that they do here, a writer, a, a um, um, story writer, a lyrical person, I don't know, something here that I feel is this person's big energy, okay? Like, I feel like they're a big, big energy person here. And so I feel like this person is not 
aligned or making themselves available in this connection in some way that that makes it seem as though they're actively choosing or ignoring or missing out in some way on purpose and so the long term vision you might want to create here is suspect so i think you feel let down in some way obviously here because i feel like you're wanting peace and harmony but I feel like you're not quite sure here, okay? Like what the hell is going on in some way and you're needing to have an understanding. So this is what you're needing to understand. That there is massive, massive change going on with this person and why things are happening the way they're happening is to protect you from getting hurt. And so if this person seems like they're delaying or they're not engaged, Okay, if they're not engaged or if they seem like they care more about their image or what they have going on in their world, because like I said, I think there's a focus here on some sort of thing where they're either a performer, a star person, or a writer, I don't know, like they're invested in something here that's taken up a lot of their time. And a lot of time, a lot of your time, because I feel like you're involved here, waiting, hoping, anticipating, seeing something for self feeling shut out, maybe having to heal throughout this, but not knowing how to fight, having to fight along the way, feeling resistance or feeling like this person is very stubborn or fixed or that the situation is fixed and can never change, feeling maybe not good about self, feeling like are you being taken advantage of, feeling like is this you being either there sort of martyring self or giving of self in a way that this person can burn and turn or use without you gaining substance, without you gaining what you want to create. And Spirit is saying, you are creating this. You will create this. And it's natural for you to have doubt because what this person is going through, you're not quite privy to seeing. And so as they go through this, yes, they could make certain decisions, but the decisions that they make have to unfold the way they do working with the universe and so sometimes when they make decisions it could seem hurtful and it could seem contradictory to something manifesting and it could seem selfish and it could seem like making things worse and it could seem like this person wants to be stuck or is choosing to be stuck but i feel like all of this process is one in which we learn to break chains okay and so i feel like you're understanding yourself better and i feel like you're as this as this unfolds you're gaining your own sort of understanding of value and what you will and will not sort of put up with for self period whether it's in this connection or not and you're identifying you know what is worth fighting for and what is exhausting and what comes naturally and what does not and so why you need to know all this information is because i feel like you might be feeling used abused feeling cut out feeling like this person is their indecision might reflect uh, on you in some way feeling like should i be inspired by this long-term vision that i have should i trust and Spirit wants you to be calm, trust, know that you will see. You will see a creation. You will see the abundance. You will see. And you can see this now. But if you don't see it now, it's because you've had to go through this experience in a way for you to get there organically, to have the wisdom to see, to understand, to shed parts of self within yourself so that you're able to really see this very clearly and this will give you peace to stay calm regardless of how long this journey this person's thing is taken here that you have value that you can create abundance that things will move and flow forward for you that you're not stuck in any way and if a person in your life is stuck like this person seems to be it is for your own protection Okay, divine protection here from this person's experience here, because whatever world they're deal dealing with here is something they're having to break their chains. And so you might feel sometimes like this person might be more focused on self or might be selfish or might be doing, I don't know, whatever it is that you feel. And so 
allow this to be whatever it is without trying to grab on, attain, or resist, or fight. You just allow yourself to be in some calm energy, knowing that the truth shall come to you, that the old will fall away for both you and this person, because the experience here is mirrored in a way that when you understand self, when you release any sort of energy that's friction, okay, be it res resisting or trying to attain and hang on, it, it creates a polar opposite sort of energy on the other side. So we learn to just find calm within this, this experience and we release what we need to as this person releases what they need to. But I feel like there is something here that is not quite worked out yet. So we don't see it. So we have doubt and so we panic or we have, we start to resist or we start to fight ourselves or we start to fight this person or we start to do certain things and get stuck in loops and cycles that starts to destruct, you know, whatever is, is happening here. So sometimes destruction is needed in order for things to grow. And I feel like things are being dissolved in a way here with the skulls. Okay, dissolved in order for there to be something worthwhile and abundant here that's being created. So destruction isn't always a negative thing. Although if we're in the way of the destruction, we could get damaged. And so I think divinely you're being protected against the damage that's happening here. And so there is a message here about this person not squandering the time so much where things start to dissipate and they miss out because they're apprehensive to doing what they need to do to make this change. And this could be a message for you, wherever you resonate, but that message is coming through. To not hum and haw, to not just wait until the last minute to make change, to actually make the changes, cut out what they need to cut out, commit to what they need to commit to, communicate what they need to communicate, find the balance sooner rather than later in order for things to flow better, for there to be abundance rather than get stuck in loops and, and repeat cycles and get stuck in chains. This is where the experience comes from. Okay. I feel like somebody feels used here. So let's pull some tarot and see what I'm missing here. Spirit, for pile four, and this pile four needing to know about this reading, specifically the person they came here about and what they're needing to know Or I guess what their person's needing to know about them specifically so that they understand or get what they need. Whatever energy I'm reading here, however this is sitting, can we get more information, clear and concise, for the greatest and highest good of pile four. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message. Thank you so much, spirits. And thank you so much, Pile Four, for allowing me to tap into your energy, the energy around you at this time. I'm truly blessed. Reading them all in the upright, we have Eight Swords. That's the limiting thoughts. Okay. Limiting thoughts that we believe to be true, that hold us captive rather than allowing us to move forward. Seven Swords. This is deceptive energy, and we could be deceiving self by telling ourselves there's a limitation and this is a lot of mental thought here we might feel used we might feel deceived okay but i think what that message is coming through is that this will become very clear like you're not being used something's being created here but you might feel this way regardless of what the truth is or what you see but know that this is happening in order to protect you here from something that could be very destructive more destructive and, and, and cause a lot of destruction here. And so instead of causing a lot more destruction than need be, just enough for the universe to work, it's magic. There is destruction here that you're not seeing everything. You're not seeing everything unfold. And so you second guess and you start to doubt and you might put limitations. There's no need to do this. Yes, the magician. Manifestation. Manifesting. Let this create food and water. There's a manifestation here happening. Okay, this is Virgo and Gemini energy. So you might be doubting whether you're manifesting anything at all. Okay, uh, eight wands and the magician's communication. So we might be unsure about how to have forward sort of communication here in order to manifest something. If we're not seeing, if we're not privy to seeing and we feel very limited 
in a situation here. Five cups. Sadness. Yeah, we don't feel very good. Especially if we feel we're being used or deceived, then we feel sadness. Ace of swords falling in my lap. More swords energy. So this is all about truth, clarity, communication, honesty, a new beginning. We have a few coming out. The star coming out twice. These, these cards are so funny because in every pile, we pulled a second tarot pack and it repeated sort of what was going on here in the in the um, spread. And so we have the star, Aquarius energy, long-term vision. I feel like you want to attain some sort of thing, okay? Like you want something here and you could see it for the future here. But I feel as though you're in the dark, like you're not seeing how to get there. You're not privy to this communication or this understanding of how it's going to get there. You want to manifest it. Okay, and I feel like it's happening here for you, but I feel like what you're experiencing here is a must-needed sort of thing in order for you to work through this, but don't get stuck in, in limiting thoughts. King of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy coming through, and the Ten of Pentacles. That is all about, again, the, the long term here with the star, what we can build for ourselves for the long term, stability, family, our legacy. King of Swords. The King of Swords is, is a logical king, okay, very intellectual, understands things, experience coming through very strong here, but look, the sort of truth is pointing down in both these cases, instead of upwards with his integrity and honesty and communication, and we also have Seven of Swords. So I feel like there's something here that isn't being communicated. There's a lack of understanding something here. And so because of the, the fact that there's a lack of communication and understanding, there's doubt in whether we can manifest something for the future that we want. And I think what you want is, is this long-term ten pentacles, okay? This is like a beautiful happy ever after of having everything we kind of ever want to build that structure and stability and commitment around us. And I feel like if we're not confirmed this by way of communication or we don't see it, because we're in the dark, we start to really limit ourselves and feel sad and bad and get stuck in this five cups. But know that the messaging here is the reason why this is happening is there are things going on behind the scenes that are this person that you're involved with here, okay? And like I said, flip it if it's the other way around, but this person is having to go through in which you're not privy to for a reason, protection from poison, okay? But when we have five cups, there's always two cups standing, despite the, the three cups that are spilled. And so I feel like this is a process here. And with the alchemist, I'm getting strong temperance energy, which is how things come together in order for them to work out. And it's taking quite some time here with the acorns. It takes some time. It's being written. Okay, whatever this is, is being written in order to get balance between you and this person for things to work out. And you might be losing hope because it's taking long and you're not seeing. Okay, so you're not seeing although this is going to take some time. The lovers in the bottom of the deck. Okay, so Gemini energy, and this is a choice. And this is a partnership, okay? Two people balanced. This was giving me, like I said, the alchemist was giving me temperance, okay? Sagittarius energy. It's how do we show up and have the other person sort of, sort of show up to have the same value so we could find balance and a partnership? Okay, so I feel like this is a destined partnership coming together here with another that's being, I don't know, behind the scenes being worked out in order to find balance. Okay, and so we might be going through destructive periods here where we feel like things are not revealing themselves in a way that makes us understand or mind understand. So then we feel limitation. Okay, but Spirit's saying, stay inspired, stay in your high energy stay in an unconditional loving sort of energy here in order for things to flow, in order for there to be a coming together, for there to be a choice in the future to come together. And because there will be a choice to do this, although there has to be the perfect sort of time here. And, and devil energy is happening right now because this person's engaged with something here that I feel is needing to be broken with these chains. And so you don't want to create your own sort of chains. I do feel for this pile, I'm going to pull three more. To see what am I missing exactly, Spirit, from this message? What does Pile 4 need to know about this reading? 
clear and concise message. It's so funny because it's supposed to be information about yourself that the other person is needing to know. And they came out kind of reversed, I feel. The sun, again, yes, exactly what I said. The tarot keeps repeating. Queen of Swords. Certainty, certainty, clarity. Queen of Cups. I'm not reading any reversals. Okay. Two queens. And bottom of the deck, chariots. Okay. Victory. So if you're doubting, victory. Victory. Okay. But in order to have victory, we have to go through the course. Look at this course. It's all checkered. And it's funny because this is giving me the checkers game. So you might feel like, can I trust this? Is this a game? Am I being used? Okay. Like this is a wavy sort of road here to get there. And so the chariot has to remain balanced throughout this checkered experience and we feel used we feel this is a game we start to second guess we start to mm, be eight swords okay but the universe is navigating with the chariot always about the universe with the major arcana while we integrate certain aspects of self in order to successfully balance balance okay balance with the alchemist the temperance energy i was getting so that we can come out the other side and so when we get blind we don't see what exactly is in front of us and so we start to doubt we start to lose our hope there our inspiration so start coming out is all about hope start coming out um where was it here hope spirit might sense you're losing hope you're gonna get the clarity you need the certainty you need okay this is clarity certainty the experience you need queen of swords this comes through with the crone somebody who is experienced who understands who can see Okay, despite maybe what she sees with her eyes, she knows from experience. So you're going to know from experience, you're going to see it, it's going to be very clear here. Okay, and the Queen of Cups here is someone who is compassionate, loving, giving, kind. So you're going to remain this beautiful Queen of Cups, not somebody who is, you know, um, bitter or tainted or destructive in any way. You're going to be able to give love, you're going to be able to find balance, you're going to be able to make this choice to come together here with this alchemist to provide the best version of self okay but we're still working on what it is that we can see when we can see it and only the universe is pulling us through so we're kind of on a need to know basis so pile number four you will get clear you will see clearly what you're supposed to be doing remain in this beautiful queen of cups energy this is why it's important for you to know this okay now it got flipped here is because I feel like you might have felt very much tossed about here, okay, through an experience of not knowing. But I don't feel as though this person is in an energy here that's trying to use and abuse and toss you about. I feel like this person is having to work through something here that's solely about them. And you're being asked to keep hope alive and not to get stuck in five cups and sadness here. Although sometimes we have to experience sadness as part of the journey, but know that the sooner we can get out of this, the sooner we can embrace some sort of truth here and see clarity, okay? About seeing the truth, about seeing the truth, about seeing. And I feel like it is about the future sort of attainment here that you can have, okay? So I feel um, about this person, because we weren't getting a whole lot about this sort of King of Swords energy. I want to see. What does Kyle Four need to know about this King of Swords energy? Because we see you coming through as a Queen of Swords. So we have the Divine Counterparts, Queen and King of Swords. Okay, and these are intellectual counterparts. And we were getting the writing here. So maybe both you and your person share in some sort of aspect of intellectual writing or stardom. But what do, does Kyle Four need to know about this King of Swords specifically? Because he seems very removed very cold potentially because something's not visible to you so you're needing to know something five swords yeah it's like this person is in a in a self-defeating energy here so this is why you're protected with this protection from poison okay he's in five swords and then five wands yeah five five conflict and loss but it's also rebuilding it's about change okay so there's lots of conflict here and we see competition here. So the field, I don't know, like I feel like, that, again, this is like somebody maybe who's in the public eye, okay, or who's famous in some way. So there's lots of competition. There's lots of sort of eyes here, um, lots of people involved in some way. So this person could be in, in very destructive sort of five swords energy. And so to protect you from whatever's going on with the devil here in this king of swords, 
you're being protected and you're being asked to trust here. Okay. So I don't know how much of what's going on here specifically you're in the know of. I don't feel very much. And I feel like the less you know, the more sort of eight swords you become. But Spirit's saying, allow this to give you an understanding that you will get clear, to remain hopeful, to remain inspired, to remain that you're going to be successful in navigating through this, that there will be a coming together of balance here, because I do feel there's something divine here with this person. But I feel like you guys are coming here all kind of on your own, and there's chains that need to be broken. Okay, so this is what I see, pile number four. I hope this resonated for you guys. I know this one was kind of a tricky one, but this is what I got, and I will see you guys at the next one. Bye.